Well, hello and welcome back. We're looking today at a very simple instruction. Do only this. Remember, I've said, and very recently, that spirituality is simple. It's very simple. We're the ones that make it hard. We're the ones that decide that now it's not easy. Even though it's simple, it's really not easy. And we're going to make it complicated as hell for ourselves. And we're going to add layer upon layer of difficulty, degrees of difficulty, like we're being judged in a diving competition. And we're going to factor all that in and keep ourselves dazed and confused. Yeah, we don't have to be. So when we say, do only this, what are we even talking about? Share, sharing, share the miracle. Extend love, and only love, to the Son of God. Simple. Again, simple and easy are not things that we necessarily equate with one another here in the world, because we are so used to having everything be so multifaceted and so complicated. In fact, many of us wear our complication like a badge of honor. So to the extent that that has benefited you and helped you in this life, great. Now that you're on the path, the spiritual path, Let's pause and reconsider. <clears throat> I invite you to reconsider complication. So in a section of the text that is soon to come in this video series, we'll be looking at this idea in a couple of weeks. Jesus presents for us a very helpful teaching example of a child having nightmares. So a child dreaming and being unable to discern between the nightmare and the waking state, believing the nightmare to be true and real. So in order to comfort the child, it doesn't help, does it, to tell the child that that big evil monster or that war that you just dreamed about isn't true. That monster wasn't there. Well, to the, the, the child, that monster was there. And it was very real and threatening, the big ugly teeth, and it smelled, and it was coming to eat him or her. Wasn't it? So that doesn't really help. What helps is to reassure the child that he or she is safe now. You're safe now. You're safe now. And we're the child. Flattering, isn't it? Yet when we believe in the ego and in our sense of individuality, we're in fact the child that's unable to discern between truth and illusion. We're unable to discern between waking up and being asleep, between our nightmares and reality. So we're the child. The Holy Spirit can, of course, tell us, and anyone can tell us, that what we're seeing here is not real. But it may be more helpful for you right now to hear that you're safe right now. And rather than receive some elaborate instructions for don't do this, don't do that, do this, but not that. Anything that would get us confused. The Holy Spirit instead points out that we should do only this, do only that. There's a big difference in this 
instruction. First of all, how well do you, as an adult, as a big kid, respond to a series of prohibitions? Don't do this. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not means you want to do it, doesn't it? Thou shalt not. Why does everybody say I shouldn't do this? I shall not do this. No way. I'm doing it. The rebel child comes to play. So you can see how much more effective is the instruction to do just this, do only this, extend love, share the miracle with your brother, do only this, share. It's a powerful lesson. And again, the exact section of the text is actually from section six, which we'll get to in a little while here as we go through the text. And it's very, very powerful. Here we're wrapping up section two of, of chapter five, the voice for God. And we're looking at the Holy Spirit and what is the Holy Spirit, but the call for us to awaken the answer, it's a choice that we make. The Holy Spirit is always in us. It's a part of our mind. It's not a thing that's external. And here in paragraphs 9 through 12, we have a very uplifting message from Jesus, who dictated a Course in Miracles. So he reassures us that he's equal to us. We share the same mind. He's our equal, not someone who's vastly superior to us. Our equal, who made a decision wholly for the Holy Spirit, wholly and totally for God, and awakened, and now invites us to do the same, like an older brother who's had more experience. His decision for God gave him all power in heaven and earth. It was his decision, his unequivocal decision that gave him power, and we can do the same. And he's showing us how to do that. That's what this course is all about. So we see something very important here that brings sharing into the conversation. The decision is the decision to share. The decision for God is the decision to share. We share. Remember, sharing ideas can only strengthen the idea. Because if you share an idea, you are not missing out on anything, are you? The idea is strengthened when your brother receives the idea that you shared and knows it to be true. That's how ideas are strengthened by being given away. We share the Holy Spirit. We share the Holy Spirit with our brother. And we know that we not only have this strength, it's who we are by giving it away. If we hoard it to ourselves, then that's egoville, isn't it? We're off hiding in a corner like a miser just with all of our possessions and all of our little treasures hoarded up in one location. And what happens then? Well, we want to defend our cash against all comers, don't we? That, that flows naturally from that decision. So the decision to share is the decision for God. When you forgive, you forgive yourself. 
because there is no separation of any kind. This is literal. There is no separation, period. We have these ideas of separation here in the world, but the practice of this material involves our setting those to the side. So the Holy Spirit here is the call to awaken and be glad. And when we become tempted, here in A Course in Miracles, temptation does not necessarily mean the same thing that it does here in common parlance in the world where we might be tempted by a beautiful, hot, sexy stranger or something like that. We might be tempted to pick up a wad of money that someone dropped on the street, put it in our pocket and just say we've always had it, right? Those, that kind of temptation, that's not what we're talking about here. It's temptation here to see ourselves as an ego, to see ourselves as individuals separate, cut off, that's temptation here. It's temptation to fall back into our old patterns of behavior that we say that we want to get out of, that we say we want to break free of. So we're invited every moment of every day to recommit to our spiritual practice, to recommit to awakening. Because it's one thing to say that you want to wake up, and it's another thing to walk the path, to actually do it. And it doesn't happen unless you do it. It's not enough just to say it. In all honesty, the spiritual marketplace, the spiritual realm here in the world is full of people who say that they want the peace of God. They say they want to awaken, but they're utterly unwilling to do what it takes to do so. They're completely and utterly unwilling to set the ego aside. They're completely unwilling to forgive. And if you've ever found yourself in that place, that's part of the journey isn't it? We've all found ourselves in that place. Who hasn't taken a look, a real look at the material here in A Course in Miracles, especially the idea of true forgiveness, the practice of this material, and thought, no, I don't want to forgive this person. This person treated me really poorly recently, and I don't want to. Nope. No way. I'm not forgiving them. I'm not forgiving this political party. They suck. They're scum. Did you see the bill they tried to pass? Hell no. Right? Who hasn't had that kind of experience? We all have it on the path. But what we return to is what this course tells us, is that forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. So the simplicity of the instruction, do only this, is very powerful. It's very important because we can't, even though we may want to, keep our little pockets of discrimination and hatred for this little political party over here, these little scumbags over here. Yeah, I don't like them. I'm going to keep judging them, but oh, I'll forgive everybody else. Mm, oh yeah, right. Or I'll forgive everyone else that I've dated, that I broke up with, or they broke up with me, it all ended badly, whatever. Yeah, they're exes, it's the past, but this one, hell no, I'm not forgiving this bastard, right? These are examples that are all too common, aren't they? And do they seem extreme? I don't know, maybe. They're pretty, they're pretty common, aren't they? Where we want to continue to judge and blame somebody. Why? Because they've offended our self-concept. Self-concept. That's an ego term, isn't it? 
They've run afoul of who we believe we are in this world, which is none other than ego identification and defining and defending personal territory. So is not your brother equally worthy of forgiveness and the love of God as you are? Of course the answer is yes. It may be a process for us to admit that to ourselves. But this is why we repeat ideas. This is why forgiveness, true forgiveness, is a practice. Because we find that we need to return to it over and over again. And the more simple the instructions, the better. Do only this. Share. Share the Holy Spirit with your brother. Share love. It's what you are. Truly. I invite you to respond to the call of the Holy Spirit. I invite you to respond to the call of your inner teacher to share the miracle, to share the love of God, to share the Holy Spirit with your brother. I invite you to respond to the call to awaken. When else are you going to do that but today, right now? So as we go forward here, there are a number of perfectly understandable and legitimate questions that may come up when it comes to true forgiveness, when it comes to the practice of this material. And it is, in fact, the case that forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. So if you find yourself in the position where you have a troublesome or even an abusive ex or family member, you know, for decades, I had an abusive family member in the presence of my own mother that has been my largest forgiveness lesson so far in this lifetime. You may have situations where you really don't want to forgive something or someone. Now, if that's legitimately going on right now, yes, it's true that forgiveness is either total or it's not at all. That is the case. So eventually, if we want the peace of God, we set all of our grievances aside. We forgive totally. However, if right now, today, you can't go there, that's all right. What I invite you to do is start with what you can forgive. Remember, anything that appears in our lives, in our experience, that is not wholly joyous, so anything that troubles us, anything that pisses us off, anything that rankles us or makes us uncomfortable, anxious, in any way, is raw material for forgiveness. So you'll be presented with multiple opportunities, even in the next 10 minutes. So we have many opportunities every day to extend forgiveness, to extend the miracle to our brother. And start with what you're capable of doing. If you're capable of forgiving the dog for barking during the video, there's noise cancellation here, but you might have heard Buddy just a minute ago. Do that. Forgive the dog for barking during your video. Forgive yourself for stubbing your toe. Right? There are many things that we can forgive and start with what 
occurs to you to do. From there, it will grow. But we all have to start somewhere. So there is a, a very popular phrase in world spirituality. In fact, it's the title of a book, an excellent book, by the way, by Pema Chudrun, and it's Start Where You Are. Of course, right? Of course you start where you are. In forgiveness, start with what you're capable of in this moment. And don't worry about the abusive acts for the moment. There will come a time where you are directed by your inner teacher to forgive your abusive ex. Understand you may still keep a very healthy boundary in place, a communication boundary. Don't call me, don't text me. There might be a restraining order, even there might be a legal boundary. Seriously. You don't have to have a sit-down, face-to-face conversation with this person. Why? Because forgiveness is done in the mind, at the level of the mind, this person does not even need to know you've done it. It's not necessary to write someone a long letter to pour your heart out or to have a sit-down conversation where you fear that you will not be safe. It's not. Forgiveness is done wholly and completely in the mind. So, Start with what you're capable of today. Really, start with what you're directed to start with. That's all done under the guidance of our inner teacher, after all. So, as always, I invite you to connect with your inner teacher and do what it says for you to do. All right. Thank you, as always, for tuning in and for your dedication and commitment to practice. I continue to offer these videos several times a week for the sake of consistency. Well, and number one, we're going through the text of A Course in Miracles, which, if you haven't noticed, is kind of long <laughs> by design, right? Jesus has to say the same thing multiple times, so we get it, but it is, we're in the middle of chapter five, there are 31 chapters of the text, and that's just the text. So there are many videos to come, and I continue to show up and offer them no matter how many people may view them or may not view them, because that obviously fluctuates. It comes and goes. So I never know who I'm going to reach with this message. Therefore, I turn on the camera and microphone and broadcast it. Even if only one person listens, if that one person, i.e. you, if you are inspired to practice, if you are inspired to share the love of God, to share the Holy Spirit with your brother, is isn't that worth it? It is. It's more than worth it. You never know who you're going to positively impact. And it's just as true for you as it is for me. You do not have to create a YouTube channel, turn on a camera and microphone, and broadcast to a worldwide audience. You don't have to do that. Yet there are still people who you will influence the best. You have the relationships with them, or you will have, you'll come into contact with them. There are people that only you can truly reach. They'll respond to your delivery to your message, even if it's a hug or a smile or wishing someone good morning. You don't know. We never truly know how we're going to positively impact people. So we show up and extend love. We share the Holy Spirit. That's what I invite you to do in whatever way you're called to do that today. So thank you 
Again, your comments and questions are always welcome here, and the subscription button is the red arrow in the corner of your screen. We'd love to have you join us. We do have an international community of people, and it's so wonderful to me to see so many people deeply invested in their own awakening, in their own spiritual practice. When you think about it, that is what the world needs, isn't it? So the world needs you. So get in touch with your inner teacher. Again, if you have comments or questions, feel welcome to leave them here. And I will see you very soon.